Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming to uh, such a niche topic on the internals of React. Particularly, we're going to look at this through the lens of a renderer. If you've never heard of a renderer, that's OK. You'll know what it is very soon. Uh, but just to be clear right away as we get started, because there's 20 other tracks. By the way, if you see Todd, Danny, any of the other speakers, organize a conference with 20 tracks is insane. Give them <laughs> hugs, handshakes, high fives, sandwiches, a blanket. They probably need a nap um, later. Uh, Whatever, so yeah, they did an awesome job. But there's a lot of talks, there's a lot of things you might want to see besides this. So just to be clear on what to expect to give the chance to run somewhere else if you so desire, um, this is not gonna be an intro to React. Uh, I'm not gonna kinda like, well, maybe like a super, super, super high level intro to React, but I expect that you found out already used React before or familiar with React. Uh, maybe potentially, hopefully, written something with React in some capacity. Um, I also like, am not going to talk about any sort of JavaScript fundamentals, so I'm going to assume that you're familiar with modern JavaScript. You've heard of ES6, hopefully you know what a class is, fat arrow functions. If you don't, you're going to see some code that might look unfamiliar. Rest assured, this is more or less modern programming in the front end world. Um, and there's plenty of companies that will hire you to work with newer tools if you don't get to. So uh, let's see. There's kind of three reasons why I think you might actually want to be in this talk. Um, so hopefully our assumptions align here. The first is that you're familiar with React and you're very intrigued uh, by it, like on an intellectual level, so you hope to learn a little bit about how it works and how it models the world. Uh, the second is, uh, of course, right open source conference and you want to contribute. Maybe you're in the uh, Hacktoberfest thing to get a free t-shirt online um, and you need to contribute somewhere to get the pull request, to get a shirt, whatever, but you, uh, you want to know how it works so when you look, go into the code base, you actually know how it works. And the third is you're like me and a handful of other people and you love React, quite frankly, and uh, you want to take React to new places with a renderer. Um, so we're going to start with a, a handful of demos, um, and then look at React from like as simple as a view as I could possibly think of. Um, there's a couple of last disclaimers. I am not on the React team. I have no, like, privileged access or information to the team that any astute community member could not have. Uh, naturally, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, we're going to look at a handful of uh, things. Uh, I'm the author of something called Tiny React Renderer, which we're going to look at at the end, uh, which is a tiny React Renderer. Uh, and then also uh, another project, uh, which we'll see towards the end of these demos. So uh, everyone familiar with like the hello world of a programming language? Like, React's Hello World is this uh, counter application, uh, which is actually a really uh, cool approach because it shows like all the React ideas from the like, end user's perspective uh, in a very like, set of simple, quick steps. Uh, first, you have like, some stuff that you're getting rendered with like click, click counter, some sort of text, possibly, maybe, and then some number, uh, which as you click, it counts up. Fascinating, I know. So uh, let's begin, like, and just look at like what this uh, very initial step into React, what some modern JavaScript uh, looks like. Uh, so uh, we have, you know, everything extends to the React component. That's the core building block in any sort of React application. That's basically like how you model the entire world is a component. Uh, components encapsulate um, state, and then down at the bottom, function. So we can see. Uh, we have our app, the entire app, inside one thing, because making everything inside one thing is a great idea for building large-scale applications. Uh, got some function or event handlers, we call it increment, so whenever this thing is called, we're gonna update our state internally by incrementing one time. And this is more or less what it's gonna look like. Makes sense so far, everyone following along? If no, I'm sorry, because we just began, and it's not gonna get better. Um, and at the very end, uh, which doesn't scroll down far enough, uh, you see that we call this thing called react.op.render. So we take this, this idea of our app, um, the subscription of it, and we actually stick it into a DOM node somewhere, and React does magic. So let's uh, take it the next step, and now we want to, let's see, um, pull what was our former uh, div, everything in line. We want to have two counters. Like so, a pretty simple step as far as our code. It makes us uh, be able to do new and interesting things. Um, 
functionally looks like this. You know, very simple code, just two XML documents, basically, or XML elements, more or less. And we have fully encapsulated state, event handlers, whatever. And the step to that is pretty uh, straightforward. Um, first thing we do is rename our app to, uh, oh, let me jump down, rename app to counter, mind blowing. Uh, and then we take all the DOM stuff that isn't related to our click counter and we get rid of it. Uh, sorry, that's really, really low on the screen. Um, yeah, and with that, we've done the full extraction of our uh, monolith counter app into something we could compose together in microservices front end development. Hip terms all around. Um, now I'm going to take this one step further. For some reason, we would still want two counters, but we want one to increment or begin at a different value. Uh, once again, like this is all straightforward. This is our entire introduction to React. Um, and we see we have one, start of zero, one of five. They can increment on their own inside of DOM. Uh, and the change there, we took our state that started at zero, and we just gave the option for it to start at an outside value. Um, with that, that's basically the entire mental model for building a React application for the outside world. Uh, now we're going to do something potentially a little bit silly, and I do not recommend this in production, but I think it does make a really cool demo. Uh, we're going to do one small level of indirection so we can use this counter in a few other areas besides the browser. Um, don't do this at home. Train professional. Not train professional, actually. Wait, shouldn't uh, it be don't do this at work? Do this at home? <laughs> uh, do this at work, not at home. <laughs> um, so we're actually going to take our, our render method, which used to be inline uh, a few minutes ago, and we had some divs in there. And we're going to actually have that render function come in from the outside. Um, and that function is going to receive an object, which has an on-click handler, and then uh, my current state. So the API for this entire thing. Oh, and totally feel free to interject at any time, ask questions, whatever. Uh, if I'm not explaining something or moving too quickly, feel free to yell, stop, or slow down. Just don't tackle me, we'll be okay. Um, yeah, but so now the API to our counter app, um, it takes an optional initial count, but now it has to take a render function, which receives two objects. Uh, and with that, we're going to update our initial DOM counter from moments ago, uh, where all that logic is now encapsulated in this thing. And all I need to do is send it through the stuff that the outside world gave to me and provide it with my render function, which, again, we just copy-pasting stuff out. Uh, refactoring in React apps is amazing. You just copy-paste stuff. Um, Stack Overflow can actually like build your app now. Uh, yeah, so I render the div, props on, props on click, Click counter, state count. Uh, and this, I promise, the code's all up on GitHub. You can look at it afterwards. This uh, is the exact same functional uh, behavior as we had in this first place, but that last bit of code is running this instead. So if you've been following the React community for a while, uh, you may have seen Facebook uh, early last year, January last year, at uh, the first ever React Conf. I think first ever React Conf. Um, released this thing called React Native, which was the first uh, officially supported render outside of uh, the DOM. Um, and it's very unique compared to most JavaScript solutions in that it's actually rendering native UI views, um, full native applications, whatever, uh, powered through JavaScript React. The same mental model you used to construct uh, the basic apps we looked at at the beginning can now be used to do this here. Um, the fun part about this is this is actually the exact same counter we just used in the DOM. So we're going to import that exact same counter. Uh, if you look at the GitHub repo, it's just symlinked everywhere. Um, we have a, we're going to call it native counter, so we're semantic. Uh, just kidding, that doesn't matter to me. <laughs> that was heresy. Uh, sorry. Um, and then we're going to render some uh, native controls. So instead of divs and spans, we have touchable highlights, views, text. Again, beautiful. Fascinating million dollar ideas. Uh, but there's a few community run renderers. Um, one more disclaimer at this point. This is a completely unsupported API. Uh, of course, we're talking about the internal something. So 
Uh, well, first off, we're talking about something in the front end JavaScript community, so of course the lifeline of this talk is very short. We're talking about the internals of a particular JavaScript library, so it's even shorter. So much so that actually the initial talk became completely irrelevant earlier this month. Uh, so luckily we're going to try to talk about the ideas and not the realities. But uh, yeah, React Blessed is a cool thing. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, Blessed is a rich terminal user interface editor. Um, it looks kind of like this. Uh, you can have rich buttons, controls, text inputs, layouts, graphs, whatever inside uh, your terminal. As you can see, once again, we have our counter app running here as well. And it's using the exact same implementation as before. The only change we're doing is our render description is a tiny bit different. Um, now we have generic elements, boxes, buttons, uh, and weird blessed things. So that's cool. Um, but now we're going to take a step away from uh, the counter app. Unfortunately, I know it's riveting, uh, and talk about another project called React Music. Oh, sh uh, and kind of like hopefully introduce and inspire some ideas that you could use React for that you may not have considered. Because uh, internally, it's really just like a tree of things, and how could, what could you do with a tree? Well, you could render to the audio, like the web audio API, and cool animations. Um, for real, uh, Ken Wheeler made this. If you don't know Ken Wheeler, he's very prolific in the React community. He does some really interesting things like this. Also, all my slides are created with <coughs> Spectacle, which is an editor he made. Um, but yeah, so you can see we have our analyzers, song, sequence, samplers, synth. Compose them just like any other React component. Um, have your own component uh, methods to do stuff at the appropriate times. And then in the end, you're going to you know, render your description with your song, tempo, and a lot of sequence, blah, 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 blah. Um, pretty fun. Uh, React can also be used to do some 3D programming, which, so uh, this demo was recorded last night with entirely too many things on my computer at one time, so the frame rate is horrendous. I promise it can be much better. Uh, but this is uh, React bindings to the 3JS JavaScript library to render 3D uh, programs. Experiences. For real, it's right there. You can install it with NPM, like everything else. Uh, and our render, um, we set up our React 3 world, some 3D mumbo jumbo, gamma input, shadow maps, <laughs> resource fong material, mesh fong material, sorry. Um, scenes, cameras, lights, etc. Uh, so at this point, hopefully, you're kind of becoming or beginning to think about uh, the the generality of this component model. And uh, apparently, if you're a 3D programmer, graphics programmer, going from 3D to VR isn't that huge of a step. So Mozilla has this project called A-Frame, uh, which is uh, VR in your browser, which this is a live demo. Uh, it's simulated because we're not using an Oculus Rift or Hangout or whatever, but you can see like clicking up and moving around and stuff, and that's cool. And we're going to import some stuff. Same thing, everything you do with React everywhere else in this new model. Uh, but let's go back to that for one second, because I thought I saw something show up on the side over here. Oh, crap. That count is back. And I have an icon somewhere in here, but it's black, so I can't see it on a black screen. There we go. What happens if I look at it and click? Oh, sweet. Oh, shoot, there's another one. So that's fun. And <laughs> magically, this is implemented with the exact same counter we were using everywhere else. Uh, all we're going to do is change our uh, counter to uh, React A frame text and have some stuff there. And now, I promise this is the last demo, um, and then we'll <laughs> look at boring things in code. So I mentioned earlier, I, was a, I created one other project. Uh, and that's something called React Hardware. Uh, it's React bindings to the stuff you see here. So I didn't have like an LCD screen on hand in my hotel room last night, but I did have an LED. So every time you click, it just blinks the number of times you click. So we'll hit four blinks here, five. 
Uh, and then if I had another button and LED, I could like, you know, have two of them and have one start off at five. But there's you know, very general application to the React model. Um, same thing, React hardware, same hardware as everywhere else, or same component, uh, then some blinking LEDs and buttons, and yeah, you get the idea. So hopefully that was as fun for you as it was for me. Uh, but seriously, everything, yeah. If you stayed up as late as I do, feel free to take a nap at this point. Uh, just kidding. Um, so we're going to uh, break React down into two super high level views. Um, I'll maybe mention a little bit of the, uh, the things that are changing and to be aware of, uh, whether you look at the React code base today, uh, in a month, in six months. Hopefully the core pieces will generally be the same so you'll know where to look in the general like, view of how things fit together. Uh, of course, specific APIs and specific implementations uh, are not going to be the same. So as a whole, you can think of React as a core and a renderer. Uh, well, you just saw like all the renderer side, which is just like you know taking those ideas and applying them to a certain thing. Uh, so the core, on the other hand, is all the other magic. And the beautiful thing about looking at this from only the idea of a renderer is we can uh, kind of gloss over some of those core pieces which are currently going to be changing. Uh, but so in the React core, um, there's a few concepts. Uh, the virtual DOM, if you've heard this term, kind of exists in there. Reconciliation is a core concept, uh, but it doesn't really live there today. Um, then React components, which we saw with the class thing, extends React component. Instances, uh, which is what happens when React internally uh, news up or instantiates one of those things. And then elements, which is, Basically, just a big JavaScript object of what happens inside each one of those uh, render functions. Um, one last thing. So, when I started preparing this talk many, many moons ago, there was like no information whatsoever about this. Now, I've discovered that there's a whole section on the website about contributing, uh, so I don't have to cover certain things that I would have had to, like their module system, which is different than everywhere outside of Facebook. Um, which is really good, and also uh, they've had a few people from the React team giving talks uh, about this uh, and contributing and how things work inside and how things will work in the future, which I do a much better job than I ever could um, explaining it, because they actually know what they're talking about. Um, so then the next side is our renderer concepts, uh, which we're, spend, we're gonna spend the rest of the talk on this half of the world and only like peeking at the other side um, very briefly. So internally inside React, uh, collo colloquially, uh, there's things called host environments, and that's where the renderer is. So like inside you'll see React DOM component, React DOM mount, React Native component, React Native mount, um, those sorts of things. So we're gonna use hosts. Whenever you hear the word host, magically insert whatever you want to do with React that doesn't currently happen, like React Mars Rover host. Um, and then reconciling to the host. Uh, so it has to deal with and work closely with the reconciler, but doesn't do the reconciling. It's a huge grain of salt with that statement right now. Uh, handling prop diffing. Uh, so when you receive props, how's, how do we actually care about diffing that, like whether it's primitives, whether it's functions, uh, et cetera. There's some pretty straightforward algorithms to do, like bare minimum, which will cover most basic use cases. Uh, event handling, uh, which all community-based renders have very simple event handling. If you look at React's actual implementation for event handling, it is a fascinating read, and it has like literally pages of ASCII art. Highly recommended. Will not mention it all for the rest of this talk without my eyes bleeding. Uh, and then this weird thing called injection, um, which should be going away in the future, uh, but is definitely t brought React a long way, but it's the source of many of their internal uh, inconsistencies or things that they have to change in the future. That makes sense. Um, so that, should we go ahead and implement a renderer? I don't know how much time we have left. Oh yeah, we have plenty of time. Um, so there's a, a few things. This is a simplified version of Tiny React Render available on the internet. Um, well, there's like four 
Well, two real things that you have to care about. Uh, two things you have to care about today, but we're going away. So we're going to talk about the two core ideas you need to know about as a renderer. Uh, and these are like the React host thing. Um, those are the mount function and the component. Uh, so like everyone's written React DOM dot render or React Native dot register component or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, I take the absolute zero hands to mean yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you follow through the code base, every single instance is going to lead up very quickly to a mount module, which is responsible for uh, taking that you know initial app description and feed it into the React runtime, if you will. Uh, I like to think of React more as a VM written in JavaScript for specialized applications uh, than a JavaScript library. Uh, so if you think of those terms, um, React DOM dot render is like your main. That's where you'd like to take your application and bec become a real thing. It goes up into uh, this mount method module, which is responsible for uh, basically all the initial uh, setup, bookkeeping, teardown of that top level component. Um, so that's what we're going to look at right now. Uh, yeah, the two other things that you have to do if you were going to do this last month was React 15.3, React 15.4 changes the world. So uh, talk to me later if you do care about doing a render with 15.4, um, but it's, it's interesting. Uh, default injection, uh, which is a very host specific thing, uh, and reconcile transaction, which I think I've seen that copy pasted from every single one uh, into other renders. So yeah, just copy paste some stuff and continue on. So mount component are actually interesting. Injection is interesting too. Um, oh man, this format is terrible on a narrower screen. All right, so uh, yeah, said that stuff. Um, yeah, all right, ignore all that stuff. All right, so this is where we get into explicitly unsupported territory with stuff that will change regularly, uh, as in three weeks ago, and you can't do this anymore. Um, but as with all modern JavaScript tooling, you start off requiring the things you care about. Uh, instantiate Rack Component, the Reconciler, Instant Handles, Updates, and your Render's Injection. Uh, real briefly on each one, Instantiate Rack Component is one for taking what may or may not be a component class or may be defined in one of the three, four ways that React supports defining component classes um, and ensuring it is a valid uh, definition and that it does work. Um, React Reconciler is the workhorse. Uh, today it's what we'll called the Stack Reconciler. It will be a fiber reconciler in the future. Watch another talk. It's fascinating. Um, and at that point in time, renders will become a more first class thing. But until then, uh, deal with the hacks that we'll discuss um, and things breaking with, on you. React Instance Handles. Uh, a very, very large part of React internals is just bookkeeping. Uh, React updates, which is directly tied to the reconciler uh, and the fault injection, which is weird. Uh, so if we look back uh, at this code, we're going to just real briefly kind of break this down. JSX is this, the common way to write stuff with React, but what you may or may not realize, it's literally just function calls. Uh, when you com compile that, uh, you really just get a bunch of React.create elements nested. Um, really, so that's our element. And we render, or the, like, you know, the main entry point in our mount function, it receives that next element, a potentially host specific thing like a DOM node, um, a native tag or container or whatever, uh, a blessed screen instance, uh, some sort of port to communicate over Formata for hardware, um, and then an optional callback. Uh, which is called when it's done. Uh, a very beautiful thing, in my opinion, of the React community, the React implementation, is how much they work to create a, an amazing developer experience. Uh, React Native, of course, has CSS layout inside of it because they thought that was a very natural uh, and superior layout um, implementation. So they actually implemented it because they wanted developers to be comfortable and confident in what they're doing. And of course, if you've done any React, you're going to see warnings, uh, potentially invariants, more often than not warnings, 
happen when you're doing something unexpected, and it tells you what you did that it did not expect and how to fix it. Uh, so in your render, you're going to want to do the same thing. Uh, every single render begins with ensuring that, hey, the thing you just gave me is actually a thing. If not, blow up, halt the program. Uh, next, provide any guidelines. If they gave you something uh, for your host, make sure that it's valid. Uh, do any sort of assertions, helpful information you can do uh, to help the developer along. Let it be a learnable tool. Um, don't blow up in their face. Uh, and then we begin with our bookkeeping uh, and instantiating our new React component. Uh, so at this point, we should mention that the naming internally is very inconsistent between components and elements. Most of the time when it says uh, component, it means element. Um, I believe this one is actually named correctly. We take our element and we create a new component instance from it. Uh, at that point, we literally just say React do magic. Um, a React reconciler is going to be used numerous times both here and throughout the other functions if you're building a full, uh, full of service renderer um, and in our React host component where it calls a reconciler with receive component, update component, where it receives a component, the current transaction that's taking place, uh, and more bookkeeping information. Uh, if, if you've seen any of React's newest um, warning logs, you may realize or have noticed that they uh, actually include like your entire uh, render tree from like a uh, errant uh, component all the way up. Um, they do a lot of bookkeeping. They like basically rebuild the entire stack to get down there and back up to give you the most information possible. React Fiber actually re-implements that part of the JavaScript VM. Uh, yeah, and then callback, uh, and we can introduce you a few things like component get public instance. Um, so again, this is basically copy-pasted throughout renderers with the interesting part right here. Uh, so that's, that's really like, if you're like looking at a super minimal renderer, that's all you need to do in your mock component. Uh, oh, wait, did I actually delete a big chunk? I did. All right, all right. So there's one other uh, key piece inside here, which when it receives next element, uh, if you're familiar with React reconciling, set state, it like goes down from that point in the tree down below. You can also do that from the very top level. Uh, so you can you know, just call React DOM dot render root component over and over and over again. Uh, and it's going to do the same reconciliation process versus the remount, uh, rebuild the entire DOM process. Um, so there's a little bit of bookkeeping and checking once again at that point. If you're familiar with uh, React DevTools, uh, DevTools kind of monkey punches into React's bookkeeping as well. So it can support way too many versions of React with way too many changes. So uh, it's pretty gnarly, but that will become a first class thing and the bookkeeping will become, uh, public might be a little bit too strong of a word, but it will become more normal and less like, let's just look at objects inside React internals and see what happens. Uh, so now the next part, straightforward, we're gonna create our component. And for the tiny React render, this is actually going to be super simple. We're just going to like serialize it to a custom format of JSON. Uh, React elements are just JavaScript in the first place. We want to do something interesting, semi-interesting, with the props and the return value or the children uh, to get this hopefully as digestible as possible. Um, so there's still uh, React composite component, React multi-child components, a few other things uh, which live in core that we don't have to worry about. Um, that still work uh, completely on their own without our host things. So this is, once again, the only specific thing. We have two components we're going to look at in here. The first is kind of like a MVP, minimum viable component, uh, just the, the API structure of what exists in there today. And then our actual half-baked implementation uh, doing something to JSON. Uh, once again, like, you can look at any renderer. They're, gonna, they're all going to have these two pieces and then whatever extra stuff they need for uh, their specific implementation, which gets far more interesting and complex than this. Uh, and these components have actually a very symmetrical relationship to the user land side of creating a component. Um, so it feels extremely natural. Uh, our minimal viable component uh, is constructor function or a class, it has some internal things like what node it is, uh, whether it's the DOM node, host node, React Native node, or 
whatever instance handles they use, React to Art, um, et cetera, the mount image, uh, which is whatever like is relevant for that specific render. HTML strings, actual DOM elements in some situations. The rendered children is whatever comes in at like the very end. Uh, that could be null, a single child, or an array of children. Uh, this is one of React's internal points of abstraction to avoid allocations uh, if possible. Uh, and then the actual current element, which is the currently like React element description that we saw earlier called next element. Comes in here, it becomes the current element. And then the prototype or the methods on this are uh, the very minimum, get public instance. So if you call like find DOM node, what'll get returned if you uh, use like the test utils and need to click on something, this is the thing that gets called internally. Uh, and then the symmetry with the public API, we have our mount component, receive component, uh, unmount component. And then of course you can see like from the public API, uh, if you don't have it memorized like I think I do, uh, there's like component will mount, com and then mount component, then component did mount, uh, component will receive props, uh, happens before receive component, component will update, happens afterwards if the should component update, blah, 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 unmount component has component will unmount, and component did unmount. I don't think there's a did unmount actually. Um, and then get host node. And then if you have children, uh, you're gonna wanna mix in the, uh, the concerns there. All right, so that, that makes sense so far? Sounding yes. Nailed it. All right, so we're trying to re-enter a component. Uh, so again, like we're just gonna serialize something to JSON. Uh, some quick backstory on where this, this idea for this particular render came in. Uh, does ever, anyone use React Router? I already know. Oh yes, I got hands. Um, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, so I was talking to uh, the creators of React Router uh, a while ago, and they were like, talking about this idea and how they do some weird and hacky things uh, previously between React components and make it into like the actual objects they want. They had this idea like, well, what if we could just like do like a React uh, Router renderer, give it that stuff, and get like that actual object they want to work with, and not go through some of the things they were doing. So that was the, the root idea for this, was to do a React router specific implementation that allowed them to give a to JSON uh, function to serialize the routes, the mesh components, et cetera, to the format they wanted. Uh, we have our mount component, uh, which you know, takes the current transaction, bookkeeping, bookkeeping, context, which is a secret feature. You probably use it, but hopefully not directly. Um, I think I have a cop typo in there. All right, so mount component, we actually want to uh, go ahead and assign uh, our current node internally to whatever the current element is, mount children. Um, if you're building a real renderer, uh, you're gonna wanna do things like, uh, well, mounting, you don't have to diff the props, but maybe you want to uh, serialize or clean the props in some way to only allow a limited number of them through um, to make sure you don't just have a bunch of stuff floating through your code base that, or through your internals that you don't want. Uh, potentially sign up some event handlers, register uh, with an internal uh, event system, what have you. Uh, pretty straightforward. Receive component's much more interesting. This is when React's reconciling, it'll call this. So you had an element, and it's gonna update that exact same element. So we're gonna receive the next element description, scan the current transaction, uh, so you can set yourself, your update into the appropriate scheduling. React is very concerned with scheduling. Even though it's called React, it's scheduling. Um, so yeah, we wanna grab a handle to our current element. Uh, we know it's gonna be gone very soon, so we'll call it the previous one. We'll go ahead and sign uh, our new current element. Um, at this point, you would diff between those two, apply the new changes of your props uh, to the new element, update your children, flush it all to the screen. Uh, get host node, uh, this situation we're just gonna return this. Uh, if it was React DOM, you're gonna return DOM element, native, whatever the instance handles is. Hopefully, the point. 
unmount component is the last thing. We're just JSON, so there's nothing to unmount or GC. Just stop referencing it. Uh, but alternatively, he'd be doing any sort of removing from the DOM, uh, cleanup work, uh, removing event handlers, not having memory leaks, et cetera. Uh, and then kind of just mix uh, root things back in. And seriously, with that, like, we just built an entire React render. We copy paste some things out of React Core, because um, we're, you all generally we could just build it in React Core and just use the actual implementation, but we copy pasted uh, a few things and built an entire render um, in, what, 20 minutes? Uh, there are a ton of resources online. Of course, I'm fascinated with React renders. Uh, so I have a list where I've been trying to keep them. I had a few other demos I couldn't get working quite in time that target other really weird and crazy places. Uh, my GitHub repo, you'll find Tiny React Render, React Hardware. Um, I referenced a couple of articles earlier. React from Scratch uh, is one of the actual core team members showing how to build React on the other side and covers more of the reconciliation and the core ideas. Um, really good. What's next for React uh, is from uh, another guy uh, on the, Clark, what's his first name? Uh, another fellow on the React Core team, Andrew, Andrew Clark, thank you. Uh, on Fiber, which is where they're re-implementing their entire reconciler, uh, I would love to talk about that afterwards if anyone else knows what it is and is interested. Um, and then Facebook actually has real docs on how to get into this now. Uh, but like, feel free to ask any questions now, come up afterwards. Uh, I did just push the slides up, or sorry, the demos up, the slides I'll add up in a little bit. Uh, you can always hit me up on Twitter, and if you're on Reactive Flux, React Internals is a channel started specifically to talk about these kind of things that aren't really supported but are fun anyway. So, thank you. <laughs>